go for it. Friggin' what up, dude? Um, Strider Wilson, and I'm the host of this podcast that's mine. It's gonna be called History is Nice. History is Nice. Friggin' what up, dude? Welcome back to another ep of History is Dank, dude. I'm your host, Strider Wilson, dude. We got Aaron beasting it on the sticks, dude. What up, my dog, Aaron? What up? Dude, freaking fired up right now. Been touring with the boys, dude. Hey, good to be back after a week off. Sorry, my freaking dank Torians, dude, legends, you know, to miss uh, a week there. But look, we're hustling. We're running and gunning. We were in the Carolinas. Dude. We were in this little town. Aaron, you ever heard of Greenville, South Carolina? I have. Dude, this town. Not to be confused with Greenbow, Alabama. Greenbow. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for yelling at the mic. Or Greensboro, North Carolina. Yeah. Dude, I love that. Um, this town, dude, is built. And they've got towns like these, these little middle American town. And Greenville's a little more built out. You know, they got, the Carolinas are kind of big for um, minor league baseball teams and stuff. They got a little minor league stadium there, but they got this main street, dude. Let me tell you something right now. Let me, here, let me just preface it with this. I know about bros, dude. Okay. You want to write in questions about bros, dude. Anything about ladies. Look, I'm just as lost as any other guy, but I do know this. Girlfriends love little towns, dude. They might not love Little Dinks. Mine does. Thank you very much. But they love little towns, dude, that have nice trees. Dude, these towns have amazing shade, dude. Oh, this whole Dude, if you're a single guy, go to Greenville or any town with a little main street. Dude, the window displays there, Aaron. They got like eight stores that sell trinkets, dude. What's a trinket? I don't know, dude. But I know girlfriends love them, bro. Ice cream stores. Here's how you know you're in a... A town that a GF loves, dude. They don't have ice cream stores, dude. They have creameries, dude. Oh, yeah. Why are they called creameries? I don't know. Maybe because girlfriends cream their friggin' shorts when they see these towns. Dude, they've got... Dude, you know you're in one of these girlfriend towns when they've got, like, just benches with, like, statues of, like, a nice old man. Like, not even a war hero. It was just, like, a, a guy that was nice. He just had good conversations with strangers, dude. That's the type of town this is, dude. And, dude, here's the thing, dude, he's not even dead. He's just still alive. That same same old dude in that same sweater cruises around and gives you good life advice, dude. Sees couples walking around, dude. Dude, just freaking girlfriend just scoping families of three, dude. You know? And that's with a dog, not even a kid yet, but you know they got one on the way. I don't know, dude. Don't know anything about ladies, but I know that freaking ladies love these little towns, dude. Probably because the only job women are allowed to work there is being a vet, dude. They're all just veterinarians for small rescue dog. You're a big dog, get out, dude. Small rescue dogs owned by firefighters only. Every every store is hyper niche like that, you know what I mean? That's how you know you're in a small town. Hyper niche stores, you know, like Craig's. All we do is just we restain decks for dudes named Craig. And that's it. Just good shade, Main Street, you know. There's a magic shop, but it's not creepy. Just nice towns. There's a small river that goes through it. You know, not a big river, nothing crazy. If you fell in, you know, you don't get hurt. You just go, ooh, it's a little chilly. Just good stuff, dude. That's all I'm saying, dude. I'm charmed. Dude, you know what it is? You go there and you go, I'm being fucking charmed, dude. That's how you feel. You use words like, this is pleasant when you're there. And then you fucking bone, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what it's all about, baby. You got to go to these little towns. What's there? Really nothing. I mean, I mentioned there's minor league baseball. It's fun, but like, there's nothing. There's a comedy zone with your bros touring, by the way, chatandjttour.com. Check it out, or I don't know what the exact website is, but just type that into the Google machine, and you'll see me, the freaking four horsemen of the chill apocalypse come into cities near you, so check it out, dude. But it's sick as hell, dude. Um, like, Aaron, do you like to take the fam to, like, a quaint town like that? Sure. Yeah. You know? You look at stuff, you make this noise. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. 
You just you know? go, yeah, this is nice. Yeah, exactly. Huh. This is nice. Unless it's too crowded, and then you're like, ah. Yeah, it gets a little crowded sometimes. The, you, you know, you look at stuff and you go, that's for the whatever season it is. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, that matches what season it is. <laughs> you know, I don't know why, but this box of matches feels Christmassy to me. <laughs> <laughs> I want to put this on a tree. You want to put shit on trees. Maybe that's what a trinket is, dude. Not always. I don't really know what trinkets are, dude. They feel like they're from a bygone era. I don't know, dude. Anyway, dude. Fired up on small towns, dude. Fired up how happy they make GFs, dude. You know, if you're if you're uh, your relationships on the ropes or something like that, go to a small town. Take your GF there. It's gonna make her happy. You know what I mean? If you got a little dink like I do, you gotta pull stuff out. You gotta pull out moves like that. You know, gotta find other ways to invoke pleasure, dude. You know, spiritual pleasure, dude. Um, all right, dude. Today we got a freaking rather gnarly, the opposite of dank little towns as a subject matter today. Aaron, we all know about that giant ass asteroid hitting the Yucatan Peninsula 65 million years ago and boking all of the dinosaurs. We know about that. Yeah. Did you know that there was even an even bigger mass extinction longer ago than that? No, I didn't. That killed basically all living organisms on life, but except maybe like 5%, which is a reason why humans are even alive today. And that dinosaurs were able to rise up afterwards. It's called the Permian Extinction, okay? And it's not as sexy because, and there's theories as to what caused this extinction, which we'll get into, which is enticing. Um, but the, it, it wiped out large uh, land vertebrates, which we didn't even know about. Like, there was older freaking dinosaurs even before dinosaurs. We'll get into what they're called. Um, these things got latered. Everything basically got latered, and we're here to find out why. Okay, we want answers, dude. It's obviously sexier if it's a large astronomical event, like a giant asteroid cruising in and creating an entire, you know, dust cloud killing all life on Earth. Basically, what we're going to come to at the end of this uh, slight teaser is w when there's no sunlight, we know this. That energy and sun is the source of all life, okay? Yeah. We need that shit in carbon, organic material. Um, and so how does that get eliminated from the equation? We're going to freaking dive into that dude, today as we check out the Permian extinction, dude. By the way, I like the term that they got latered for a mass extinction. Yeah, dude. Because they didn't, they, didn't, <laughs> they didn't get pieced out. They got latered. Yeah, I feel like if you get latered, that's like when you're getting bounced out of a party, like the dude, you know, who's not getting laid that night and is just sitting like with a freaking, you know, three packs of eight milligram Zins in his mouth and just getting a fat buzz on at the door and just hoping to fight someone. When he finally gets to kick you out for not knowing the dude that you said you knew well enough, or like you spilt a beer, like, you know, tilted over a picture frame, he slams the door, and before he does, he goes, later, dude, and slams the door. But if you peace out, it'd be like, this party's lame. Peace out. It's like, that's your volition, you know? Yeah, yeah. If you peace out, you're like, later, but... At <laughs> worst, it's amicable. Yeah, exactly. But... You, you have some say. And let me tell you, this Permian Extinction... No one had any say, except Mother Nature herself. Maybe. We'll see. We're Just to let you know when we're operating, if you can even wrap your mind around this, the Permian period was 298.9 million years ago, okay? Up to 252.2 .2 million years ago. So that's like the wow. geographical reference. So 252.2 million years ago. Then you, then you enter the Triassic period before, of course, you know, our favorite Jurassic period. But... Um, you have basically tons of plants. You know, you got to imagine yourself in a sci-fi thing. Just imagine what this, what's the name of the planet in Avatar? Um, Pangea? Pandora. Pandora, exactly. But during the, uh, the Permian period, Earth was Pangea when like all the land was together. It was before like massive plate tectonics. There was, there was Pangea. Land was locked. The sea, the, uh, ocean levels were, a little higher and we'll get into you know, that's going to come into a, a effect in a little bit and be a theory of maybe this extinction so we won't get too much into that but land was locked you know where we're standing right now in socal dude burb dank could have very well been underwater dude you know what i mean um so shouldn't, that's pretty gnarly shouldn't have been since we're between a bunch of mountains but 
But dude, who knows when those mountains formed? How old? Dude, we're yeah, we're dealing with yeah. two hundred ninety-eight point nine million years. Yeah, that's true. This is like Griffith Park's got to be pretty old, but maybe not yes. that old. Yeah, we got to get like go down, you know, and do some carbon dating, dude. You, we got to find a a virgin in cargo shorts, aka an archaeologist, and just be like, dude, <laughs> what's going on with these rocks, dude? Carbon dating is a app for uh young people to meet seniors <laughs> <laughs> dude that's a great call dude if you if your fetish is 70 plus dude you go on carbondating.com <laughs> that's amazing dude that's hilarious and then you know every other website is just for old dudes getting with younger like that's just the mode decorum yeah um, but carbon dating Flip, flip the rolls. Um, so the lame theory around this is that this extinction took place like over maybe 200,000 years, which like over that 50 million period, 45 million ish period that I laid out is relatively quick, but also isn't just like one boom, big asteroid impact. So, you know, I don't want to get you guys too horny listening to being like, oh, something super gnarly happened. Gnarly stuff happened. We're going to get into it. And gnarly things were roaming the earth kind of. Um, but dude, this, I read this dank ass article on National Geographic, so check out the uh, sources. But which is where I got a lot of this from? Love National Geographic, dude. This was the only good part about being in a dentist's office. Was like, dude, I'm gonna crush some National Geographic right now before I absolutely have a worst time of my life. Yeah. I'm gonna look at like an aurora borealis before I get in there and just get drilled. And pre-internet, one of the only places to see boobs. True. Oh, great call, dude. As a kid, you're like, dude, I, yeah, there might be something on like, you know. A, a Malayan tribe, you know, the Sakai people or something like that, you know, and rubber band trees or something going on there. And you're like, let me just see some bobes right now, dude. Great call, Aaron. You're, and your your mom would be like, huh, my son's learning. And you're like, yeah, I am learning. <laughs> Don't worry about it, dude. Just can't stand up right now and go to my appointment. Just give me a second, all right? Let me start reading a little bit. Um. All right, dude. So basically... Less than 5% after this extinction, I mentioned, less than 5% of animal species in the, in the seas survived, 90% of plant species die, and like 95% of um, land species die. You get like bacteria and amoebas living and shit like that and a few smaller animals. Um, the main theory here based on this, um, this scientist, I think Louie is her name, and she's like, uh, basically there's acid rain, which is pretty gnarly, dude. That's something that you want to steer clear of, dude. That's like that scene in Dante's Peak when, like, the grandma's pushing the boat across the river to save her grandchildren, you know? Mm -hmm. But imagine that just falling from the sky. That gave me nightmares, that old lady. Nothing worse than an old lady just being like, ah, ah, unless you're into carbondating.com. And you might like that. That movie's great. It is a sick movie, dude. And geologists, like, are like, it's pretty accurate. And you know what? That's not a virgin geologist. That's Pierce Brosnan. Hell yeah. It's James dude. Bond, dude. Yeah. Let's go. And Linda Hamilton. And what? Sarah Connor, man. Yeah, Sarah Connor, dude. Yeah, bro. I was like, dude, just call up the Terminator to get rid of this friggin' volcano, dude. Yeah. Um, so it's tough to figure out exactly what went down. We'll get into some theories. They're, they basically have like a lot of Permian, um, just because it's so, so long ago, like in the Czech Republic, um, in part of like the German and Polish borders, there's like a good rock bed there with Permian uh, rocks that they can study and pull organisms out of and like basically like these geologists look at like the levels of like they do radioactive but like looking at this for this acid and samples of rock and like if it's like astronomically higher than it was like a thousand y years before that rock bed or maybe ten thousand years or whatever it is the time frame they're using probably a hundred thousand um then they're like oh some event went down and they're like that's got to be acid rain and it's consistent across it's consistent in czech republic but it's also consistent over and like i think then they go down to like the serengeti um which is a huge thing of course it's pangea but it would still be really far apart um so just very very freaking gnarly dude um, not to be confused with chocolate rain yeah too one of the best videos of all time chocolate rain chocolate sometimes whoever said you know without people spending time in, alone in the room we don't get chocolate rain we don't get bo burnham Mm -hmm. You know, maybe we could do without Machine Gun Kelly, but, yeah. you know, there's, we get good things. It's yin and yangs, you know, some duality. So I mentioned By these way, big... sorry, did you see um, my Instagram story yesterday of 
uh, Post Malone fallen in a hole. No. He <laughs> fell in a hole? Just like <laughs> on, you, on stage both? in St. Louis. No way. He's performing and he fell in a trap door. <laughs> Dude. He fell in a trap door. Yeah. Which was open. Like, it wasn't like it just opened when he stepped on it. Like, it was open when he walked to this platform in, in between the crowd. Yeah. Uh, and then he just... But then again, I saw the hole I fell into. So, I mean... Dude, that'll get you. Hey, sometimes curbs get you. Sometimes, like, not even curbs. Like, those little driveway little ramp things will get you, dude. Yeah. <sighs> Gotta have our head on a swivel. Dude. I, I, that's why I just walk around always in an athletic stance. I just move laterally, linear, linear motion always, dude. Freaks people out. Very off-putting, but <sighs> I ain't getting hurt, dude. I ain't playing hurt. Got a valet, dude. So these species that got later boked, you know, there's a lot of animal life uh, going on in the ocean, sea life, like I mentioned, but let's focus on the vertebrates. It's a little more tangible, a little more relatable. There's these species called synapsids, which are like mammal-like reptiles. Um, they were the big land vertebrates. They all got boked, aka latered. Um, these are the, quote, stem reptiles um, and the early ancestors of snakes and lizards and dinosaurs, uh, anapsids, turtles, dude, archosauruses, dude. So um, these synapsids, um, give rise to mammals. Like these are our ancestors as well. And I have a few, um, examples here. And you can also tell, like I mentioned, the scientists are studying like acid rain, but where you would find a synapsid fossil, you'd be like, okay, this is Permian period. Let's study some more stuff. Maybe we can figure out what happened and why these animals all went extinct. We'll get into that. But first, let's just take a look so you can kind of picture, cause they're, they're like reptile mammal type. They're pretty interesting looking. So if you're listening, I'll try to describe it. Um, but here, Aaron, we can pull up that first. This is the Lystrosaurus. And basically it looks like a dork. Yeah. Like this is a dork. Like if you imagine like a, if like a dinosaur was into like, and I'm sorry, I don't want to yuck anyone yums, but like Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> uh, like that's what they played on a Saturday. Uh, they were looking forward to that the whole week. Like that's what this synapsid would be. It's kind of got like, it has kind eyes though. Um, they occupy similar n niches as dinosaurs do, like vegetarians. Like you have the more Tyrannosaurus Lex looking, looking ones, but um, and they're pretty big, not quite as big. Um, they have carnivores and herbivores, and uh, this one's apparently fleet-footed. I don't know, but it does look like a dork. Then you got this uh, one of my favorite names, the Dictodon. Is that the next photo? Yeah. You can pull this guy up. He's cute looking, smaller, not very big. Also does look like a dork. Honestly, it looks like a dick a little bit, like a weird. Yeah. Like an, it looks like a dick that you would find on carbondating.com. You know, a little wrinkled, um, sort of scared, sort oh, of caught off guard. A little long in the tooth. Yeah, little, a little long, exactly. Definitely long in the tooth. And I'm laughing because this animal does have a long tooth. They say that this would be, shares genetic, genetic uh, coding with the saber tooth tiger. So a uh, oh, wow. precursor to that, yeah. And um, You wouldn't think a reptile would have, but yeah, of course. And none of them were really that big. Like you can get, there's the Gorgonopsian, a Gorgonopsian. Uh, actually, I'm mistaken. The Dictodon is not the... Uh, precursor to the saber tooth it's the gorgonopsian and that's this next image Aaron. Okay. and you can you can look here you can get a size of the scale for how uh large these animals like there's a human being standing next to it they're all kind of shorter than us they're definitely bulkier and longer like they're kind of like probably seven or eight feet long like you'd be scared as fuck if you saw one of these things in nature like you're seeing a possum taking out the trash this oh, is, yeah. yeah, this is a possum that'll bite your little dictodon off, dude. So they all do kind of look like dorks, though. You know what I mean? Like, they don't have that, like, aerodynamic look that I like. They're not uh, terrifying, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I'm Although, sure you know. I'm sure they, they would be. But yes. Like, like that's what I'm saying. Like, dude, you see a raccoon. I'm like, I'm fucking scared, dude. They got little thumbs, dude. They're kind of cute, but, like, they'll take you out. Little savages. Um, so these are the synapses. These things all got boked. Uh, really sad, uh, but kind of dork looking. I mean, you'll see they share a lot of genetic code, like I mentioned, with dinosaurs. Um, the Gargonopsians are the uh, carnivores. 
this the first one the Lystrosaurus, which is the smaller one in the middle there that's like the herbivore these are you know there's other um there's herd animals so like all these uh mammalian traits that we have and even reptilian all existed even before like the dinosaurs who we would like like it's crazy to think there's even more ancient stuff so just some good stuff to you know if you're doing shrimp with your boys to think about um and then i have one more um predator species here from the um synapsid era it's our fourth image and this one oh oh whoops dude i don't know how this got in here dude um oh that's my bad dude this is a uh this is actually a boris vallejo image and this is a very actually badass looking reptile here um puts those dorks to sh this is like that uh freaking Lystrosaurus would like to have that reptile as like a magic card you know what i mean and just so you know those listening like this boris vallejo that we're looking at it's an absolutely shredded um, demonic goddess with an unbelievable tricep um, just mounting and taming this uh, this prehistoric and even beyond prehistoric Permian, this Permian beast it looks like actually definitely not Permian because it's not a dork um, maybe this um, Jurassic period um, beast and who knows what world it's from it could even be contemporary and it's wearing a human skull as a um, necklace, so that's pretty gnarly. Probably, there's I no would, logical reason for her art, her back to be arched like that. No, <laughs> other other than her just being like, look at my tricep, dude, which is just looks like I don't know if Clydesdales exist in this universe, but it looks like a Clydesdale stepped on that arm. That's how absolutely shredded it is. I mean, this looks like basically everyone's ex girlfriend. Or uh, the girl that you thought was your girlfriend, but she definitely wasn't. And, you know, that skull that the be her beast is wearing is definitely you. <laughs> this is like the girl that, you know, you dated and she probably liked to tie you up, you know, demean you a little bit. But you were into it because it was just, you know, it was the time of your life. Was it good for you? Definitely not. But did you have a good time? Absolutely, dude. And is she, you know, haunting and in the back of your mind you wake up in a cold sweat? thinking about her uh, i mean i imagine her name is like Desanya, something like that you know mm -hmm. i mean just pretty rad pretty rad so anyway dude you got your um like i mentioned let's get into some evidence of what happened we've got acid rain okay then from the skies dude you've got fungal spikes dude and we'll get into where this acid rain comes from but basically it's like each fragment in these rocks that these archaeologists that, you know, maybe James Bond Pierce Brosnan is looking at contain fragments of microscopic fossils, plants, fungi. Um, and so dating from prior periods, to, prior to the extinction, contains lots of pollen. Healthy, of a nice conifer forest, you know. Good pollination, dudes. The forest is thriving. It's legit. Then, in the rocks, in the Permian slash Triassic boundary, they call it, the pollen is replaced by stand, strands of fossilized fungi, golf ball-sized rocks they're looking at here. So this fungi boundary represents an exploding population. What do fungi do? They're scavengers feasting on an epic meal of dead trees. So it means there was a grand death taking place. So all this wood decaying, then you get this fungus coming in. It leads to uh, geologists to believe, okay, this fungi is spawning new life, which is good. It's cyclical. Earth is going through a cycle. But what happened? Was it an asteroid? That's what, you know, I'd like to believe because that sounds sick. Um, you know, this coll collision would have sent, like, you know, with the dinosaurs, billions of particles in the atmosphere, spread around the planet, rained down on the lands and seas, dude. Antarctica gets later, dude. The staggering force, you know. You just imagine every nuclear bomb, dude. Just imagine what freaking Putin dreams about when he goes to bed, just going off all at the same time. Just freaking gnarly, bro. Um, or, more likely, you have something that does have that impact, but it's just over, like, more hundreds, or like, thousands of years. It's just, like, rapid, um, or not rapid, but succession of, volcan of volcanic eruptions, like, big-ass eruptions. So, like, you get a big volcano eruption. That sends all sorts of gas and shit and ash into the air. But if you have these 
major volcanic eruptions on like volcano change, which I, change which did exist in different areas of the world and whatever's going on beneath the surface, fucking stirring that up could create a plume of smoke that would blot out the sun with ash and kill a lot of life. So that is one theory is this massive volcanic eruptions that equate to over the, over time, you know, like every even thousand years that going off or multiple times, you know, every couple centuries or whatever, big ass eruptions like that on a volcanic chain of multiple ones going off could equal like uh, the impact of an asteroid. You wouldn't get the crater, but you would get that um, light uh, or like shadow casting effect from all that shit in the atmosphere, dude, which is a technical term, shit in the atmosphere. Um, then there's another thing where it's like, okay, say these volcanoes didn't go off. Um, you know, maybe they haven't found ash, but they sound, found some ash. They say there's the ocean could be the culprit here, or rather algae, dude, right? So most plant life or in sea life exists in the upper levels of the ocean because sunlight is still hitting that and coral and everything needs sunlight, fish and everything. So um, that's where, you know, where these synapsid dork ass dinosaurs came from where we came from everyone everything came from the ocean even our bodies still have tons of water right like i don't know what percentage of water we are it's like 69 percent or something like that and Hell something yeah. legit maybe 420 percent dude some sick ass number like that dude <laughs> um <laughs> so sick dude maybe just like you know you know 13 inches of water dude like joe's fat hog inch amount of water like i heard when joe gets a boner it's just straight water dude um like one of those water weenies you get at the friggin water park when you're a kid during the summer um, but you would have all this algae, um, and it would just throw off, it would, it would throw off the oxygen level and basically like turn, uh, the ocean into like CO2 and it'd become like a carbonated beverage, massive, massive amounts of it. This, um, oxygen, uh, from the deep oceans would come up and just be feasted on by all this algae, killing all the life. So basically being overrun and you kind of see this in like chemical waste areas, like, but happening on a grand massive scale in the entire ocean over, you know, hundreds and thousands of years, 200,000 is what the scientists are, um, wow. hypothesizing and would just basically make like, you know, when you drink water and you expect it to be flat and then it's sparkling, imagine that, but no. you're a fish. Yeah. No. You're dead, dude. Yeah. Plants are dead. And when ocean life dies, then that's going to affect land life and everything's going to die, dude. Um, and that CO2 bubbling over is going to change oxygenation in the atmosphere and it's going to be bad, dude. Um, they also say there's a theory that these things coexisted. It's like maybe it's a mixture of all of these things. So maybe the ocean, algae's bullet going up. Maybe you have all these volcanic eruptions, the magma. And that's another thing. The liquid hot magma is driving up that cold, unoxygenated water from the bottom, feed it, feasting, giving that algae. Uh, shit to feast on, dude. Um, but really, they don't know. All they found is acid rain. Basically, they find sulfate molecules. Would have blocked sunlight and cooled the planet. And then with that planet cooling, you have um, animals dying. You know, reptiles, you know, they're cold-blooded, so they're going to go down. There was not there was not mammals at this era in this era, but they got freaking later, dude. So I mean, you know, it's a little anticlimactic. They don't quite know. Um, I think it would be sick if there was some sort of asteroid thing that Harry Stamper could have saved us from. But it sounds like it was just a mixture of um, algae and volcanoes. And the evidence is interesting because they find the evidence in fungus and mushrooms, which is sick, dude. I do like doing shrooms on bachelor parties with my boys. And um, I will be doing that with my boy Joe, dude. Shout out to my dog Joe getting married, dude. Bachelor party, let's go. Tahoe all day, dude. Um, so I'm fired up on that, dude. What do you think happened, Darren? I would go with the volcano thing because the, the plate tectonics were all going to happen, you know, so there's a lot of shit going on yeah. down there to get to get the world where it is now, the, the shape that it is and the the shape that the continents are, like... That had to have been going on during that time, so I would think. Correct. Super volcanoes are going on. And what's scary is these things are, and like the big takeaway of these things too, that's always crazy, is you know, we put ourselves 
into this equation and we go, we've only been alive like, you know, humans have been around like what, maybe our ancestors, 30,000 years. They always say they discover like a tooth or something, you know, and they're like, oh, humans were around, around for longer than we originally thought. But it's like, dude, 30,000 years is nothing yeah. on this scale that we're operating on. This extinction took place over 200,000 years. The thing is, dude, planet is changing and going through these cycles a lot of the time. And, um, you know, we got to do our part. We don't want to speed this up or slow it down. Also, you get these people who are like, well, it's going to change anyway, so why wouldn't I just fucking throw my styrofoam cup on the freeway? Because you're a dick if you do that, dude. Yeah. You know what I mean? Do the right thing. Don't, And you're going to kill something that's alive right now today. So we got to take care of our era, right? Leave something better than you left it. Don't be a schmoll. And um, it will it will pay dividends, you know what I mean? And, you know, don't go m kill lakes with chemical waste and all that type of stuff. Like, we need to protect large ecosystems and small ones, dude. And Mother Nature will hopefully keep us around if she decides, dude. Because if she doesn't, phew, we can all get fucking acid rained on, dude. Chocolate rain, acid rain. <laughs> um, all right, dude, let's do one question, then bone out, dude. Keeping it high and tight. Keeping it high and tight. This is from the, this guy named Tongue Dart, Tongue Dart D'Artagnan. Great. <laughs> so I love that. He goes, I'm the worst fantasy football manager in my league and have been for years. I essentially pay to get shit on, but still love to play with the squad. This year is the first year that the league proposed a punishment for last place in addition to a high dollar entry fee. 24 hours in an Atlanta Waffle House, every waffle you eat takes away an hour. All right. I don't know if, if Atlanta plays this scenario, but I've been to a Waffle House. They're actually pretty dank. I, I enjoy Waffle Houses, so this sounds pretty tight, but eating a lot of waffles will hurt. Um, it's highly likely, likely that I'll come in last, but I have a problem with the punishment. They know I do it because of my dedication to the league, and that and that mama ain't... Uh, I don't know, but I'm confident not everyone in the league would, be, would do the punishment if they were last. There's no way a few of them would. Should I fight the punishment because not everyone would do it or take it like a man and accept my fate? If I had confidence that everyone would go through with it, I have no problem doing it. I feel like my dedication to the group league is being taken advantage of. Uh, he goes, thank you, three-time champ. That's me, thank you. Um, all right. First of all, uh, hopefully there's... N I don't want there to be any racial implication, implication with this Atlanta thing. I'm like, I don't know about that, dude. Like, why? Maybe they just live in Atlanta. This could just be me projecting something. So if that's it, shame on all you guys. But uh, I think... Spending 24 hours in any eatery or establishment sucks. Um, just like sitting in an uncomfortable booth. Um, but it's fun. I think that's fun. Hopefully your boys would go with you and support you and have a waffle or two with you. You know what I mean? Um, and, you know, you could probably house a three or four. You know, you're going to eat three meals, eat two waffles. You know, bring a laptop. They probably got Wi-Fi and hang out. Um, I went to a waffle house in Greensboro. It was the nicest people ever in there. So I freaking I think that sounds like a sick ass thing. But on principle of them not doing the punishment, that's whack. They all need to do it, dude. You know what I mean? And you need to not get last, bro, and make sure that they do it. So but it sounds like you will, but you are right. They are taking advantage of you if they know that you'll do it. And maybe you hate waffles, so it's like aimed at you. But it sounds whack. But yeah, everyone needs to like sign something or like give word hopefully their word is bond so that should be enough but if they say they'll do it they got to do it i mean come on otherwise what are we what are we talking about so he stays there 24 hours yeah and for every waffle he eats one hour is removed yeah so he, if he eats 24 waffles he can go home correct i mean i'd take that challenge you would take that how big are the waffles i've never been to waffles. they're pretty big they're the size of a plate but they're thin Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll still be there like 12 hours probably at least. Yeah, <laughs> you'll not, be fine, It's not more, but like i take a good chunk out of it. You would take an easy chunk out of it. And the thing that tr troubles me more is his other guys like being like, I don't know if I'll do that. Or he like him knowing that they won't. They all got to do it. Yeah, and it, it sounds like a fun enough punishment. Yeah, it should be like the bottom three guys have to do it. That would be a good call. Bottom three guys, 24 hours, every waffle you eat takes away one hour. So even if they all eat like three waffles, that's nine. That's still a lot of hours at the Waffle House. It's still a half day. And you've had a nice day together. And the other boys can go there and watch with you. You know what I mean? 
I'm on board for it. But how, you have to have honor. You have to have integrity. If you commit to something, follow through, dude. You got to have follow through, baby. That's huge. If you take nothing away from this podcast, take that away. And also take away that synapsids were dorks. And, uh, you know, maybe they were the ancestors to dorks today, which, you know, I bought a broadsword online, so I'm kind of a dork too, but that's cool. You know, rep it, wear it, love it. Um, until next time, freaking check out the Patreon, Strider Wilson Treads at Gmail. Excuse me. Uh, patreon.com slash Strider Wilson and then questions, comments, suggestions, Strider Wilson Shreds at gmail.com. All that type of shit. Fired up, stay stuck, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Let hell yeah.